Venus, thank you so much for joining us for Trailblazers in Health series. It's my pleasure. Um, tell us about your interest in the cardiovascular disease and also give us some insight about your research in South Asians. Thank you for that question. My interest started in 1970 and 70s. I was in Chicago. My world was only Chicago. I was a resident. And I started seeing young Indian doctors, my colleagues, getting heart attack in their 20s, 30s, and 40s with no, none of the usual risk factors. Initially, for start to shaken a little bit, then forgot it. Then I saw more. Fortunately, in 80s, I became the president of an organization called Kerala Medical Graduates. Mm -hmm. Then uh, three years and the leadership president, I became the president at the, uh, the top office bearer of the API, American Association of Physicians of Indian origin, 50,000, then 100,000. So I saw the same phenomenon across the United States, not just limited to the US, mm -hmm. I know Chicago. I said, there's something going wrong here, but where do I start? Mm. How do I go from there? Then I uh, contacted Dr. Salim Yusuf, uh, Dr. Uh, Pichimani, of course, was my first uh, mentor. Then uh, Dr. Jeremiah Stamler. And we decided to do study on 2,000 doctors from all over India coming to Chicago, my hometown, mm -hmm. for a convention. I had the treasurer then, so I have all their name, address, and everything there in our directory. I have all the info. I, I don't go to anybody's permission. I am the one to give the permission. <laughs> okay. So I did a carry study there. Mm. And it showed, today Dr. Salim Yusuf showed, these are doctors who know the, the risk and risk factors. Do you know how to treat everything they know? But they have four times more heart disease compared to whites. Mm. We also found in the first study itself, but their risk factors which cause heart disease were no higher, if at all lower. Mm. Then I had this doubt, either the genetic component, I don't want to go into the details why I suspected. There's a genetic cholesterol called lipoprotein little there. At that time, even now, 99% of the doctors are never heard. But it's being tested now. The treatment is being tested. In uh, result, will be out by 2025. Mm. So, across to one in four South Asians have elevated lipoprotein little day, a genetic cholesterol, and of course everyone knows we had a bad problem. And then of course, the poor treatment of smoking, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. So tell me when you. You know, when you talk about genetics, uh, now that we've been aware of it for many years and your lifelong journey, you know, the research that you've done, why is it that uh, in South Asians, we are not able to manage or control uh, cardiovascular disease optimally? I think we have four problems. One thing is genetics we already covered. We can't do any change like that one except do not marry within the family, first cousin or second cousins. So second thing is that uh, uh, lifestyle, mm. okay? So we have poor lifestyle, okay? So bad genes, bad habits. What are the bad habits? Indians exercise their brain, but not their muscles. Mm -hmm. And look, just count the number of Olympic medals. So you don't have to exercise, then uh, they have the wrong belief that karma, the good Lord, when he created you, already made the, made the decision when you are going to die, how you are going to die. So you don't have to do anything. That is the belief. Mm. Okay. Then uh, bad practices. Uh, the, that is, we eat really junk food, mm. thinking it's healthy. And there is a belief is that you are a vegetarian then you are off the, you don't get heart disease. Right. And we proved in the study, vegetarians and non-vegetarians have similar risk. But vegetarian diet among everyone except Indians are highly protective. 
The reason is not because they don't eat. Because of what they eat, they eat all the healthy foods mm. and avoid the fried food. For example, Indians consume 75% of all the trans fat and fried food in the world, mm. compared mm. and only 25% by the rest of the world. So that they believe this is good. Then there are issues like uh, which cooking oil is good. People say, okay, coconut oil is good, coconut oil is bad, palm oil is good. Okay, so there is different pseudo experts telling different things. And in this connection, I would say that 60 years ago, before I came here, who was the best salesman for the smoking? It was the doctors. Mm. Doctors, 90% of the doctors smoked, and it was believed, there's a belief system. If you smoke every five minutes when you are awake, you are cleaning up your nostrils and your pharynx and lungs, you won't get any lung disease. And you don't even get influenza. You can go to Google Scholar and to the angels, you can see the advertisement. So we have a lot of belief system, bad genes, bad habits, bad beliefs. And there's one more thing. And the very, perhaps equally important or more important, that is poor treatment. Mm. Mm. That is, smoking is bad, there's zero. But the blood pressure, we have 150 medications. And it's dirt cheap now. But control the blood pressure is only one in 10 in rural India and one in 10 in urban India. It's not acceptable. And there are, we just discussed why and what, I don't want to get into that. Similar thing for the diabetes. One in 10 is treated. Nine out of 10 is allowed to continue to have the uncontrolled blood pressure or uh, the, the uh, cholesterol. In the, today, Dr. Yusuf showed the data. 50% of the heart attacks are due to cholesterol. I don't want to go into details about that, but 50%. Do you know what is the control of the cholesterol in India? 5%. That's it? 5%. Awareness, 7 to 8%. That's it? Yes. And it's very easy to test. It's not a complicated test. Right. You can go and test. So with all this, it's like a family history of heart disease. We have a national history of heart disease. You ask any South Asian or Indian. I like to call Indians because all my research was on Indian. And 85% South Asians are Indians. So I have no access to Pakistanis and Bangladeshis and Ceylonis. Right. So Indians we know. And they have... Uh, very high risk of heart disease, but they just don't want to. Dr. Enos, allow me to ask you, you know, you just mentioned about that the studies have shown that the non-vegetarian diet and the vegetarian diet have equal amount of risk of heart attacks, you know, the heart disease. Is that what you... Is... No, Indian vegetarians. Indian vegetarians, yes. all right. So let me just understand this. Let's put the South Asian community or more so Indians in perspective. Yes. You know, with the same, uh, if the risks are equal for the non-vegetarian and the vegetarians, can you elaborate that? Yes. What really you mean by that? Because yes. you see, uh, folks who eat vegetarian diet, they feel that they're much safe. Exactly. I, I want you to elaborate I, on I, that. I, I told you about the belief system. Do you know what a healthy diet is? A diet that is rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts, whole grains, uh, and low in saturated fat, high in uh, healthy fat, and uh, low in uh, refined carbohydrate, and high in whole grains, mm. uh, and moderate in uh, low-fat diarrhea. So these are the six or seven ingredients. Mm. But what are we eating? Indian vegetarians, they do not eat meat. Mm. But let's assume by the time they eat meat, how much meat they are eating. We, in the CADI study, or subsequent study, CADI diet study, we looked at that. The average meat consumption in the CADI study, 2,000 doctors was one ounce a week. So the Indians by nature or practice or whatever, I don't know why, Indians do not like to eat like 12 ounce steak or 16 ounce steak. That's not the, they eat only chicken. Right. Uh, beef is 90% do not consume. Muslim do not consume pork. So eat only chicken and they eat 
Okay. Even today, you can see that vegetarian, non-vegetarian food is 95% identical. Mm. There's one piece of chicken. Mm. It's all that the non-vegetarians get. Mm. So this is a healthy okay, pattern. But uh, you know, reasonably good, there's just a lot of salad. You never see salad. Mm. And we have pictures showing that when you have what, what the usual food, uh, this uh, naan, that is, even though it's wheat, it's really bad. It's a refined carbohydrate. And then it's with the butter, and then your curry, and you put all kind of unhealthy oils, mm. unhealthy oils. They are cooking healthy and they are unhealthy. And in that context, there are two unhealthy, three unhealthy things. One is coconut oil, the worst. Second is palm oil. Uh, third is palm kernel oil. No one uses it, but all your chocolates are made with that one. Right. Okay. Then, the Indian ghee is, is purified butter. Okay. Some there is controversy, and that's what the for, for, all the science say that butter is bad. Mm. Let me tell you a story about the butter. Uh, about 30 years ago, yeah, in 1990, I wrote at the table there. I saw it before I, in the 80s. Poland had the first or second highest heart attack rate in the world. And they were concerned. And it's a communist country. They can, and they said, you have the heart disease. Somebody said, you are eating all this butter. That's not good. How, you tell the people they don't do it. The chest withdrew the subsidy for no, no proper, no, just subsidy for the butter. Consumption came down by uh, 60%. Drastically and, came down. And, and the cholesterol came, nobody could, by 50 points. And heart attack. So they can say that, oh, this came down. How about the heart attack, death rate? In 10 years, came down by 34%. Wow. So it shows that. Similarly, there was an experiment. So we had to put all those things together. Palm oil was the only oil available in uh, Mauritius, it's an island. Uh, Mauritius was one of the countries first reported the highest rate of heart disease, highest rate of diabetes. And they were always using the palm oil, the, the deal from Indonesia, I don't know where it is. And they said they are trying to prevent the heart disease. And they had t 20 different things. One was, just like the Poland, I don't know which came first, they just banned palm oil and said, they, the whole ship went from a different country, soybean. So in Mauritius, you could not get any other oil. Okay, their cholesterol came down by 35 points in four years. Some interesting facts shared by you. Um, since we're getting very uh, tight on time, uh, I want to ask you about uh, the advancements in the area of cardiovascular disease. What does the future look like? The future is very bright. It's not bleak. And coronary artery disease has now become the most predictable, the most preventable, and most treatable of all chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is no other disease more predictable, more preventable, and more treatable than heart disease, except that the gravity of the problem is not understood, and we are not doing what has uh, done in the other countries. Let me give you another example of why I say so boldly. Uh, before the, I talked about the Mauritius and uh, Poland, Finland had officially the highest death rate in heart disease in the 60s. And 72, uh, the study began. The study was prompted by the middle-aged women, mm. 30s and 40s, and going and telling to the, to the government officials, saying that we can't let this go. Our husbands are dropping dead like flies. Mm. Can we do something about it? They were kind of caught off guard. And they didn't know anything. At that time, no one knew what to do. They didn't know it's a multifactorial disease. It's a lifestyle disease uh, by, by far. And they did not know, but they developed the margarine. They developed the fat, no, the low fat diet. They developed the filter coffee. And in last 40 years, they brought down the death rate from heart disease by 80%. Wow. 84% in men, you know, in women, and 78%. Uh, uh, and not only that, the focus was only on heart disease, heart attack. 
what happened when they did this? Now the studies report 40 years, now the third generations. What happened is that the blood pressure came down, the cholesterol came down, the obesity came down. So the benefit and the lifestyle, which uh, got uh, affected the, the second and third generation, people benefit. But still they have high cholesterol because they had the 280 was the average cholesterol. Right. When in the U.S., it was only 250. Right. Um, and as we wrap up this conversation, you know, I want you to uh, express uh, how pivotal role conferences like this can play, you know, in raising awareness among the community and the other South Asian organizations and your final remarks as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, two things. I am very happy with the world-class speakers coming, okay, and the giants, Salim Yusuf, uh, Bhopal, okay, you name it, everybody was there. This is a world-class conference, uh, and we need more of this. So this is very good. This, uh, But my disappointment that I wrote this book. Hmm. How to Beat that, the Heart Disease it, Epidemic. And read this, a prevention and management guide for, for South Asian patients and their doctors. Mm. If even 5% had listened to this, we would not have needed this conference. Now, let me tell you another thing, 500 things. So, all these countries, at least 50 countries have decreased the heart death rate by 50%. And the AHA, which is American Heart Association president, was here. And they have come up with you. Have you heard of a red, red, um, Go red for women. So they have some come up with something called life symbol seven. Mm. And that is the best thing you can do. And I have, as an expert in this field, I have modified the life symbol for three things. Mm. That, that, that will be my final remark. Number one, do not smoke. No change between Indians and uh, Americans. Uh, exercise regularly, no change except we need double the exercise because we have more problems. So the exercise double. Now the third is that uh, 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 the control the blood pressure mm. below 120, and then uh, control the cholesterol. The recommended value is 100. No, 200 for the Americans. I consider it to be 140, which uh, translates into LDL of uh, 70, and then blood sugar 100. And uh, the, the last one, maintain a healthy weight. Mm. That is the most important, okay? And if your weight is normal, all the other thing, there's something called primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention. And primordial prevention is very simple. You do all the right things before you develop any risk factors. Right. And when I was giving, a, and I, I given 500 lectures in India, when I gave the lectures, no doctor knew what primordial prevention was. Mm. So there is a lot to be done. Okay, and a meeting like this is very useful. Thank you so much for your insight and really appreciate the facts shared by you, the three important things, exercise, control, cholesterol, and avoid smoking. Those are the three inputs that I gather from you. Thank you so much, Dr. Enos, for sure. your time. Thank you.